Those are my files. Yeah, we had them couriered over. And, and listen, good work. They're a great start. We're just going to have to spend a little time filling in the holes in your research. E excuse me, Teresa, is it? There are no holes in my research. No offense. They're just some things we need that you probably didn't know to ask. Don't talk to me like I'm an idiot, okay? I may not have a law degree, but I've spent 18 months on this case, and I know more about these plaintiffs than you ever will. In 1993, many people around the small town of Hinckley, California, suffered from serious diseases, especially cancer. Few people understood what was happening until legal clerk Aaron Brockovich, played here by Julia Roberts, began investigating the matter. A single mother with no formal legal education, Brockovich was not taken seriously by most people, especially Pacific Gas and Electric Company, PG&E, who was a suspected source of groundwater contamination causing the diseases. Brockovich worked relentlessly on the case. She met with hundreds of plaintiffs, getting to know them, their families, and struggles. When her law firm partners with a much larger one to take the case forward, she is understandably frustrated, but the thoroughness of her efforts becomes very clear. PG&E has requested that we submit to binding arbitration. What's that? That's where we try the case without a jury, just before a judge. It's called a test trial. And the judge's decision is final. There's no appeal. How many plaintiffs do you have? 634. Well, they'll never try that many all at once. So, we need to get them together in groups of 20 or 30. Worst cases, the most life-threatened, the sickest in the first group, and so on and so on. And each one gets a go before the judge to determine damages. PG&E has proposed that they're liable anywhere between 50 and 400 million. So, wait a minute. Um, let me just get this straight. If we went to trial, PG&E could stretch this over 10 years with appeal after appeal. Those people in Hinkley would These still... These people are expecting a trial. That's what we told them, you and me. They won't understand this. Kurt thinks it's the best way to go. Look, I, I promise you that uh, we'll be very sensitive on this point. We will make sure that they understand that this is the only way that we can go forward at this time. But we have a lot of work to do before we even broach that subject. You know what? Why don't I take Aaron down to Paul so we can start on this stuff, and I'll fill her in on the rest Thanks. of the details. Those are my files. Yeah, we had them couriered over. And, and listen, good work. They're a great start. We're just going to have to spend a little time filling in the holes in your research. E excuse me, Teresa, is it? There are no holes in my research. No offense. They're just some things we need that you probably didn't know to ask. Don't talk to me like I'm an idiot, okay? I may not have a law degree, but I've spent 18 months on this case, and I know more about these plaintiffs than you ever will. Aaron, you don't even have phone numbers for some of them. Whose number do you need? Everyone's. This is a lawsuit. We need to be able to contact the plaintiffs. I said, whose number do you need? You don't know 600 plaintiffs' numbers by heart. Annabelle Daniels. Annabelle Daniels, 714-454-9346. 10 years old, 11 in May, lived on the plume since birth. Wanted to be a synchronized swimmer, so she spent every minute she could in the PG&E pool. She had a tumor in her brainstem detected last November. An operation on Thanksgiving shrunk it with radiation after that. Her parents are Ted and Rita. Ted's got Crohn's disease. Rita has chronic headaches and nausea and underwent a hysterectomy last fall. Ted grew up in Hinkley. His brother Robbie and his wife May and their five children, Robbie Jr., Martha, Ed, Rose, and Peter, also lived on the plume. Their number is 454-9554. You want their diseases? As a leader, we must strive to be thorough in our area of expertise. 
Now, when teaching this topic, I'm often challenged with the reality that many leaders cannot be experts in all the areas for which they are responsible. This is true. In such cases, though, we must know who is the expert. You need to have a trusted network of experts that you can work with who are so thorough. It helps, too, if those experts can show a bit more empathy, even if their frustrations are well-deserved. Who is in your trusted network? Who do you go to for expertise that are so thorough in each area when the time comes that you need that information? How are you making sure the leaders within your organization are thorough and have the right resources to be so thorough?